Well, hey, everybody, and welcome back. It is a new day and a new video. And for you guys today, I'm going to be running both of my Corvair engines. For those of you new to the channel, my name is Larry Nelson, also known as the Zen Bear Pilot. And today the plan is to run, to test run both of my Corvair powered Zenith 601s. Now, as you guys have been watching the channel, you know that I've been building a Zenith 601 for my dad. And it's been a project that he has been following along and he's been enjoying me doing the work on because he's getting a little bit older and he'd like to have a plane to kind of finish out his flying career. So that plane is gonna be started in this video. And as you guys have noticed, I've also been working on this plane here, doing the 2850 upgrade. And today we're going to be test running this engine as well. So sit back, it's gonna be an interesting one because I wanna go through both what it takes to do a test run on one of these engines, how to set them up. And again, we're gonna fire them both off by the end of this video. Now I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, which is GRT Avionics. GRT is an American based company that has been in business for over 30 years, making highly capable avionics systems for guys like me and you flying on a budget. You can start out all the way down at the mini EFIS, which has all of the capability, but not all of the size and that you'd get in the larger units. And you can move all the way up to the Horizon, which is a fully capable, fully integrated IFR platform. In the middle is what I'm running is I've got both the Mini and I've got the Sport EX. And with that, it has all of the capabilities that I want with all the third-party integration. So if you guys are building a light sport or experimental aircraft, really consider GRT Avionics for all of your avionics needs. All right, so the first thing that you want to do when you're test running the engine is set the base timing. So what I've done here is you see that little paint mark? That is on the um, harmonic balancer, and that is set at 8 degrees currently. What you do then, so I'll pull this back out here, is underneath this distributor cap right here, you set it so that the points open at exactly 8 degrees before top dead center. And that is kind of the static timing that you need for your first run. So I've got that all set. I've primed the engine. In this case, I just turned it over a bunch of times to see that I had oil pressure. Now, this is where I had the first issue come up, which was on my old system. I was using the VDO 80 PSI system, which read high. So I saw that when we were running it over, so I had to swap out and get the 150 um, PSI system, which works with the EIS. So you always have to be sure that you have the correct sending units available to you when you're doing this. So I've got the sending units now swapped out. I've got all of the little things kind of detailed. I've made sure that the fuel system is good and sealed so that when I prime it, we're not getting any fuel bypassing that. All right, so we're gonna roll the plane out and we're gonna, basically, I'm just gonna go ahead and we're gonna fire it up at this point.
right, so now that that process is done, what I need to do now is bring the airplane back in the hangar, open up the cowling and make sure that I've got no oil leaks and that everything is looking really good. But I'm happy with that. That was perfect. Nothing went as unexpected, ran smooth. So let's bring it back in the hangar and take a look. All right, so what you gotta be doing now is I've gotta kinda close the hangar a little bit because it is definitely hot outside. So once this is close enough, I'm gonna open the cowling. So let's see, that should be, that's good enough. All right, so underneath the cowling, the main thing we're looking for is no oil leaks. Uh, so we have, we've had this thing apart, we've had a lot of things done to it, but that's the main thing is make sure, turn that off, make sure that we don't have any, Make sure that we don't have any oil leaks. All right, so here's what we see here. I am not seeing any oil leaks in that area. That's good to know. Let's take a look at the side. This is the side that I've typically had leaks on before. Let's take a look. And I am not seeing Anything. I know this is just a quick look, but it is definitely looking like I don't have any real leaks to worry about. Totally excited. Again, this is the 2850 kit. It is running smooth, but there's a lot of stuff I need to do on the ground before we're ready to fly this again. Mainly because I've made so many changes, I've got to do a new weight and balance. That's going to be number one. The other thing is, is I've got some new interior panels coming in. So I need to hold off on the weight and balance until that. Now, if you guys were looking at the video here a second ago from the run, you'll notice that some of the numbers looked a little weird. The reason for that is, is that I need to recalibrate all of the fuel level sensors. So it's kind of this combination of a whole bunch of things before we fly again, new weight and balance, recalibrate the fuel level sensors, and what else? Um, yeah, weight and balance, fuel level sensors, new interior pieces, then we're ready to move on. Between now and then, I'm gonna do a bunch of ground runs, high-speed taxis, everything, just to make sure that this engine is ready to go. Another thing, as I said, this thing is at currently eight degrees um, uh, static timing, and I need to set the full static advance to 28 degrees, and that's part of the manual. So I've got a couple things I need to do before this plane is ready to fly again, but I can taste, this is just basically a kind of a weekend's worth of work to get it done, but I've got a couple things kind of pending coming in. Now, the other thing that I saw was my, um, e, not my EGT, my AFR gauge, air fuel ratio gauge. The sending unit there needs to be replaced. So I've got that here on the bench because I was expecting to do that at annual, but I've got it a little ahead of time, so we're gonna swap that in ahead of time. All right, so let's jump out to my house and start working on the budget Corvair for my dad. All right, everybody, so it's been a while since I've been working on this plane, but as you can see, a lot has changed. I've got the canopy pretty much completed and I've got the propeller ready for our test run. So there's a few more things we need to do. Number one is we got to prime the engine up. So I've got my little priming set up here for doing that. The other thing we need to do is I got to put the spark plugs back in. I've got these open because during the priming process, we're going to spin this over. Once we've got all that done, then the next step is to put in the actual distributor and set the timing to eight degrees like you saw me do on the other plane. So it's really, really hot right now. So I'm going to take a break and I'll probably be out here this evening to make some more progress towards this test run. All right guys, so we're back out here in the, in the garage. And like I said, I had to do some stuff off camera because I needed to make sure that everything was done properly. So I wanted to uh, get that done, but now I want to explain to you kind of the next step. So what I've done so far to this entire project here my, on my dad's plane is we've got the engine installed that's on the correct bolts mounted to <clears throat> mounted to the engine mount. We've got the exhaust pipes on. Everything is ready to go. The only thing we didn't build yet was the heat muff and that will be coming later. But right now we're getting ready for the test run. So with the test run I need to show you a couple things that are important for that. So number one is we've got here is the distributor cap. Now this is my test cap. Notice how I have that knocked out. That's for the number one cylinder. That's so I can visualize this, the position. So let me get that back on, kind of stocked up. So you notice here is right there is the tip of the rotator. I don't know if you see it or not, but the rotator is in that position. That's telling me that I've got this aligned correctly with spark plug number one. How you do that is underneath here, there is the, um, the drive gear for the high volume oil pump. And you want to set that in approximately the 11 to 5 o'clock position. And when you do that, 
it'll set the number one cylinder aimed at the firewall. So that's number one. Number two thing you need to do is like you see right here, this is my timing mark and it is set like I showed you on the other aircraft, if I could zoom in here, right at eight degrees before top dead center. Now let me show you how you test these two things together because we, when we set the timing, here's how you do that. Number one is you need a multimeter, which is what I've got here. And you want to set that to ohms. And what you want here is when you have no resistance, you get a tone. So in this case, I've got this, I'm going to put the correct one here, got grounding this out on the distributor itself. This is grounded out on the points. And you notice that the points are closed. As I come up to eight, they open. Come back. They're closed and they open right there. When they open, I look down and this is directly at eight degrees before top dead center. Now, why eight degrees? Well, that's what William Wynn has set as the normal point for test run. So we set that there and that gets you really, really close to the static ignition advance we need to run the aircraft. So the next thing I've gotten, like I said, I have that on there is I have my distributor cap. That's going to go on. As soon as that's on, I'm going to terminate my spark plug wires here. Once they're terminated, and what I mean by that is I got to put N so they can go on here, put on the air box and we're ready for that first run. I've already primed the engine. Everything's looking good. So let's do that real quick. Now the other thing I want to point out is that the spark plugs need to be torqued in only between 8 and 10 foot-pounds. They don't need to be jammed on there. They don't need to be a 1,000 foot-pounds. They just need to be snug. So, so that's what I'm doing right now, just making sure that we have all these torqued correctly. So that's 8.8. .8. So all it takes is just a little snug up. Now when we set this, like I said, I needed to make sure that it was a top dead center. To do that, we need to make sure that this top, this mark here is up a top set dead center and that this is on the compression stroke. The other way you can see that is by looking through here in the oil filter or the oil fill hole and you can actually look at the valves moving. You can tell if the number one cylinder is in the correct position. Well, everybody, today is the day we're going to be starting the budget Corvair engine for the first time. My dad drove all the way in from Phoenix because this is, again is being built for him. So he came out here because he wants to hear the first start of this engine. It's been a couple little setbacks, mainly from stuff that I've done, but it is ready to go. And it's going to be exciting because, again, I've been waiting to start this engine since I did the budget Corvair build many, many years ago. Sadly, more than I care to remember. But... Here we are, we're ready to start it, so let's pull the plane out as soon as my dad gets here and we're going to start it up for the first time.
Well, everybody, the budget Corvair has run going on my dad's plane, and I'll tell you what, it ran perfect. Couldn't be happier, and I am ready to get this plane out to the hangar. There's a couple things that we've discovered that need to be addressed and looked at, mainly some wiring for some of the engine gauges, but that's really it, and as soon as that's done, we're ready to start doing the wings, get this thing in the air. So we're done for today, but I'll tell you what, I'm going to kind of end this one here. For those of you guys who got planes in the garage, get building, because within the hangar, get flying. I'll see you guys in the air next time.